In this presentation series, we are looking at the key features used in requirements management. For this demonstration, I will introduce you to the Specification Manager for inputting your requirements. What the Specification Manager provides is what a lot of industry people are familiar with, that is, using a document to lay out the requirements of a project. The Specification Manager provides all the tools you need in a clear space. Let's open the Specification View on a package we need to edit or review. Many of you will be comfortable with writing specifications in Word documents or even spreadsheets, but you've probably also felt the pain of reduced traceability involved with a document-centric approach. This is where the Specification Manager in Enterprise Architect can help. It gives you the familiar document editing environment while also making it easy for you to directly connect your project requirements to downstream design and implementation models. As you will see, it is very easy to update requirement names, edit notes, address spelling mistakes, create new glossary terms, and quickly view what details are stored in related features. When writing up long specifications, it's useful to be able to switch the view between a summary format and a full text format. You can set this via the Note Format option. Let's have a look at another popular format, which is a Notes in Columns format. To keep the browser focus on the current package that you are working on, it is best to select the Context Browser option to provide a clear summary of what is currently entered and how it is ordered. Clicking on an entry in the Context Browser takes you to that entry in the Specification Manager. Unlike a text document, each requirement is a unique entity that can be simply moved as a block up or down within the list of requirements. To do this, you simply select the Move Up or Move Down options on the ribbon. Let's add some new requirements. Firstly, it's best to set the perspective to Requirements, All Requirements. Then check the element type is set to Requirements. Now, to simply add a new entry, you use the Insert option. Now set a name for your requirement. Now you can add the detailed description in the Notes area. Another alternative is to use the button at the bottom for adding new requirements directly inside the document. There are also options for formatting the notes using the context menu, which we will cover later. A common structure in requirements management is to have the requirements defined in an indented format, that is, as child elements. The specification manager reflects the tree in the project browser where the requirements can have any number of children under them. Now let's expand the view with more detail. You can use the field chooser to add additional information about requirements, such as version and priority. To use this, just drag a field onto the header bar. You can also see if it has related information like connectors to other elements. For fields with options, these are editable via the drop-downs. OK, so let's get back to our first requirement using the context view. A key field to add here is the all indicators. This gives an icon representation of what each requirement has, like a linked document, any relationships, any discussions, any assigned risks, any resources, and any related files. Clicking on a specific icon will open the related window. For instance, the relationships can be viewed in the traceability view, the discussions can be brought up and the linked documents viewed, and finally, to see what risks are set. Another key feature is the option to view any user-defined fields. These can be set using a profile and are stored as tagged values. Let's have a look at a functional requirement, which is an out-of-the-box requirement type that is set with a profile to have some preset tag values. In the header, you can select Add the Tag Value column from the context menu. We now place one of the functional requirements fields on as a viewable column. Now let's look at some tips for more rapid modelling using the Specification Manager. First up, when frequently using the Specification Manager, you might be flipping between different packages. The speedy way to open a package in the Specification Manager is to select another package in the Project Browser and then use the Control shift plus x key to view the selected package. Then pop back to the Context tab to select a specific requirement. Let's look at the Context menu on an element in the Specification Manager. Some key options include adding new elements with Control N and add a child using the Control Shift N. No doubt you will find times when you want to change the order of the elements. This is quickly done using the Control Shift plus Up key and the Control Shift plus Down key. 
To keep a clear focus on a single requirement, you can use the browser's element view. This gives you a more complete outline of the details than just the icons in the All Indicators flag. For instance, the All Indicators shows there are relationships, but in the element view, it shows a clear summary of each relationship with other groups corresponding to each indicator. Clicking on an entry opens the relevant dialog to give you the details. You can easily flip between the summary in the context browser and the details in the element browser. What about formatting blocks of text? Well, there are several options for this. These are mostly accessed via the context menu. For text color, select your text, select your color in the context menu. For bold and underline and italic, these can be selected via the context menu or using the Ctrl B or Ctrl U or Ctrl I keys. You can also set paragraph numbering or points. What about adding a hyperlink? Again, just select the text from the context menu, set the hyperlink type, and in this case, select an element. You see now there are context options for using this hyperlink. These allow you to view the details in the properties window or view it in a diagram. There are numerous other hyperlink options, including linking to model images. In the previous demonstration, we covered setting up auto numbering using the auto naming option. Given this was not set, but we have requirements defined, here is how we can prefix the existing elements. Just open the apply auto naming, then set the naming type, then apply it to the elements in the specification manager. Using the specification manager makes the process of reviewing or proofreading requirements simple and clear along with access to some powerful tools for further development. In the next demonstration, we will cover relationships and traceability of requirements in more detail. For more information on modelling using Enterprise Architect, see the resources page on our website, sparksystems.com forward slash resources.